Well, welcome once again to Calaveras Living. On today's program, we're going to talk about, actually, we're going to talk about good nutrition and how to uh, teach young people not only how to eat properly, but how to raise what they're going to eat. And we're going to do that with a member of the Food Corps. That's C-O-R-P-S, for everybody who might mispronounce it, <laughs> including myself. And uh, Noah Crossan uh, uh, has worked with them uh, since he left college. And uh, we're going to find out just what the Food Corps is and uh, what activities are taking place in the Calaveras uh, County area. So, Noah, it's good to see you. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. I like your T-shirt. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're very, very uh, explicit. Yes, Food Corps with a big carrot there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how long has Food Corps been around? So Food Corps is in its third year as a national program. And then on a state level, this is the first year in California. Oh, the first year in California. Okay. Yeah. So it is, is it for-profit, non-profit? It's an uh, independent, non-profit national organization. Um, they do get about 20% of their funding comes from AmeriCorps. Mm -hmm. which is a government-funded um, national service program mm -hmm. that uh, funds like 70,000 uh, different positions throughout the country each year, whether it's teaching, working with health, uh, working with community development or environmental sustainability. And as the kind of focus has shifted towards nutrition and childhood obesity, Food Corps kind of came around as, the, um, as a sort of health sector of public service. Okay. Now, how did you, at such a young age, how did you uh, decide that this is what you want to do in your early life? Well, I grew up um, on a farm in, uh, outside of Asheville, North Carolina, in oh, the yeah, mountains. Yeah. Asheville, Spartanburg, all around there? Yeah, yeah, right around there. And uh, I grew up, you know, working on our farm and working in the garden and helping to milk the cow and kind of understood where where our food comes from and how much work it takes to put into it. Uh -huh. And I went to college and, and traveled around and I realized that very few people have this connection and that very few people are, are farming. Yeah. And I found that that's really important for my, you know, my history and my experience. Yeah. And I think it's really important that, you know, not necessarily that everyone is a farmer, but they have some kind of connection with with their food and what, what nourishes them. Yeah, that's so. good. And you told me just before the program that you, you lived, what, for a year in Chile? Yeah, I lived for a year. I, I studied abroad in Chile, South America, and I was studying um, like rural agricultural development there. Mm -hmm. And then when you heard about Food Corps, uh, how did you, I mean, you said that's where I want to be at this time because of letting people know more about farming and raising produce? Yeah, yeah, so I, I worked for a year in uh, forestry and environmental conservation. Um, and after that, I, I wanted to kind of engage more of a community and work with people more. And so uh -huh. I found out about Food Corps about two years ago and uh, researched what they were doing. And I realized that that's what I would like to be doing is connecting kids with gardening and farming and helping them develop relationships with food. And I never lived in California and I read too much Steinbeck in college. And uh, <laughs> So you, you were going to move to Monterey, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was going to move to Monterey, but that didn't work out. So okay. Calaveras County had an yeah. opening, so I came here. Oh, well, that's good. So uh, now do you volunteer for them or you're paid or what? So as AmeriCorps um, volunteers, you're considered a volunteer. And you're, you're paid like a small living stipend. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, usually the AmeriCorps uh, positions are set up either for six months or a year. Mm -hmm. And when you complete your year, then you get an education award uh -huh. of um, $5,000 that can be spent towards student loans or furthering your education. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a, a, like a, a salary job, but you do get some stipend yeah, benefits. It sounds like there are certain benefits yeah. to it, too. And yeah. it sounds like it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Now, how many areas, do you work just in Calaveras County or other counties? So I work just in Calaveras County right now, just with um, the Calaveras Unified School District. Uh -huh. And the UC Cooperative Extension Central Sierra, their, their nutrition department kind of hosts my position, and they provide resources for me. And then I work at um, five different schools uh, throughout the week in Calgary okay. County. Now, are you pretty much on your own, or do you have a boss to whom you have to answer? Uh, I have a boss, like everyone in the world, um, <laughs> well, one except... at home and one at work. <laughs> okay. No, but uh, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> they, 
Yeah, um, I work with um, Dorothy Smith at the UC Cooperative Extension uh -huh. as one of my supervisors, and then uh, Kevin Hesser, who is a uh, um, gardening and art um, school garden kind of coordinator for the district. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a, a nonprofit called Gardens to Grow In. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to get in contact with them, their email is gardens to grow in at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so they, they uh, support school gardens. So those are the kind of two people that, that I answer to and get resources okay. and advice from. And now, wh what's a, like a normal day for you? I mean, it's always um, different. They're all, always different. Huh? Well, but you're, at, de you're dealing with young kids all the time. Yeah, yeah. So Mondays, um, I go up to uh, West Point and Railroad Flat Elementary. And I do gar what we call garden enhanced nutrition education, which is using the garden or using food to teach a nutrition concept. And then the students will either plant a seed or cultivate the plant somehow or prepare it and then learn about it and then eat it. So it's kind of a very tactile um, okay. way, of, way of teaching. So that's, that's Monday and then that's you go to Monday. a different area the rest of the week? Yeah, and then Tuesdays, I, we just started a school garden at San Andreas Elementary School here. Mm -hmm. And we actually just got some plants starts donated from a local farmer, Randy Metzger. And we just planted our first tomatoes and melons and squash right over there. So when you supervise this, as, as the kids do the planting? Yeah, over 100 kids planted a uh, hundred different plants in the ground and they all named them. One of them planted a squash plant and uh, named it Squashua. So, <laughs> and they'll come out and check on their plant, you know, and uh -huh. make sure that it's doing okay. And they'll do the watering and taking care of it and everything. Luckily, most of the uh, watering at the schools is through drip irrigation. Oh, okay. In the winter, you have to hand water, but um, we have a, 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 a connection with um, Toro and they donate kind of extra surplus stuff oh, to the good. school gardens. So uh, fertilizer and things? And Not fertilizer, but the drip irrigation. So okay. that way, you know, when everything, everyone goes away for the summer, the school gardens can still get watered, you know, so oh, it's okay, not good. dependent on someone coming every okay. day. Then where do you go on Wednesdays? So Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm at Valley Springs uh, Elementary School, mm -hmm. and they have um, an amazing school garden. It's sort of a demo garden for the area. And um, if you haven't checked it out, you can go. It's right um, behind the school, adjacent to the park and behind the Veterans Hall. And uh, I teach garden um, enhanced nutrition education classes too. In, indoors, those classes? Or outside. Outside. Most of the time, okay. in the garden. Yeah. And uh, I teach almost every class comes to me once every three weeks. And we'll do, uh, we've done a segment of... Um, uh, a couple of different curriculums based on like nutrition and nutrients and then based on gardening and kind of mixing the two. Okay. Um, now we didn't hit Thursday. And then Thursday is a pretty exciting. I'm at Toyon Middle School. Yeah, I hear they have a nice garden up there. They have a nice garden. They had a garden for about five years. <clears throat> and we recently just opened up the home economics room mm -hmm. that hasn't been used in about five years. And we cleaned it all up and scrubbed it down. Mm -hmm. And now we're cooking in there. Um, once a week with three different classes or cooking local local vegetables from um, seasonal vegetables and then vegetables that were grown in our garden. Okay, and then um, the kids they eat these for lunch or what? Well, they eat them for, they get a snack and they uh -huh. eat them as a snack. So last week we made uh, guacamole. Oh. And so they use onions from the um, school garden. And you got avocado. We got okay. avocados supplied through the cooperative extension. And then they, they'll mix it up and then they'll taste it and they'll rate it and describe <laughs> it. And then at break, We'll take it out to the other kids at, um, when they're kind of in a recess period, yeah. and they'll all get to taste it a little bit. So oh, that's good. get a little bit more exposure to the school. Now, do you have way. quite a bit of freedom in how the program's set up yourself? Yeah, so this is the first year in California, and um, each Food Corps member is at a different site. Some of them are working at school districts, mm -hmm. and some of them are working at community centers and through 4-H programs. And, for, and so it's kind of each site is unique because it's, based, it's basically trying to connect the community efforts and the community members in, in the schools in gardening and in, in nutrition from like a holistic standpoint. Mm -hmm. So each site is, is different depending on the type of community mm -hmm. they live in. So you try to cover as well, depending upon what's donated and what's accessible, uh, you're 
concentrating mostly on fruits and vegetables, right? Yeah, mostly mostly on fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Okay. Then what do you give the kids advice as to how to eat properly or what to eat or what not to eat? Yeah, so we most mostly what to eat. Yeah. Because no one wants to be told what not to eat. <laughs> so that's something you learn pretty fast. Okay. But uh we um yeah, only two I think the statistic is only two percent of American children eat the recommended the government recommended um amount of fruits and vegetables a day. Yeah, oh, that's a sad statistic. So, and there's a lot of different ways to teach nutrition. I guess the way I understand my role uh -huh. is um, teaching the students about these foods and having to, them develop a relationship um, with broccoli and a broccoli plant or a cucumber or a tomato or a peach trees that are growing little fuzzy peaches on our, on our peach trees right now yeah. so that they're more inclined to eat them and they're aware why they should eat them besides what they taste like okay. for their nutritional value. Do they get pretty enamored as to, you know, as to seeing little plants grow? I mean, what, what do they say about when you know, something comes up, you know, <laughs> and they see little sprouts or something on something? It's, pre it's pretty amazing. Um, this, they come out to the garden every three weeks, so everything's always different. Mm -hmm. um, and the one big challenge of a gardening teacher is in the classroom, you know, you have four walls and you can have the kids attention pretty well when yeah. you get out in the garden there's a million zillion different things they oh, could yeah. be paying attention to you're eating eating lizards huh? no. eating lizards you know sometimes we've had some kids eat worms um, <laughs> you know but uh, that must be fun though for you it is it is pretty fun once you you know realize that just um, it's very you know the one of the most common things that I hear w when the students when I'm talking about gardening is that my grandma or my grandpa gardens uh -huh. and there's kind of just a generational gap of gardening you know for our generation and there people are kind of getting reconnected um these days and so uh you know we'll the kids will take home these uh a, lot, a couple of lessons we'll plant a um tomato seed or a sunflower we'll thin out our strawberries and send them home and uh -huh. every week we'll come back and about half the kids have their plant growing you know and they're excited i was I was just at the coffee shop a couple of weeks ago in Valley Springs, and um, I was telling the lady what I did, and she said, "Oh yeah, my daughter came home, and uh, and she came home with a tomato plant. She said, 'We're going, we're growing tomatoes, Mom. This is what we're going to do, you know.' So you plant the seed in, in the kids' mind, and they come home, and, and with their energy, they affect their their household as well. Um, that, that's, so that's really a I mean, whoever thought of this whole program and put it together and have volunteers like you or workers like you, it's really performing a service. Yeah, yeah. It's now, the other, how many uh, food core, shall we say, I don't know what word you would use, but service are there members? No, well, service members and also how many, uh, you know, established throughout California? How many? Oh, there's, so there's 13 in California. 13, all, all under county. No, some of them are, there's one, you know, from San Diego all the way to Ukiah. Uh -huh. And uh, in San Diego, um, the lady there works with uh, the San Diego School District. Mm -hmm. And she does mostly tastings in cafeterias. Okay. Um, and then a couple other, uh, another, um, another lady works with uh, the California Alliance with Family Farmers mm -hmm. and Life Lab, which... Um, are connected with Food Corps and kind of helped us get started in That's California, right. and they they do um, they do a lot of tastings in, in the schools as well. Oh, so good. so it's either yeah. a, a nonprofit, a um, a educational um, school district, mm -hmm. or a government program like the, like 4-H or something okay. like that. And getting back to what what I kind of interrupted you, you said how many members are there you know who do similar things such as you? So there's 125 Food Corps members service members nationwide and that's in 15 states and mm -hmm. then I think next year um, is going to be 150 and they're expanding to three new states. Um, oh. that's, that's a great program. Yeah and I think the important thing though is like coming to Calaveras County um, for the first year is that there's already a lot of garden programs like West Point Elementary has had a garden for well, you said Michaelson Five and Murphy says so a great place. Michaelson's had a garden for, uh, I think, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And they've been teaching, basically what I'm doing, mm -hmm. they've been teaching um, a gardening, a six-week gardening 
a nutrition class to third graders um, for 10 years. And the master gardeners all come and volunteer one, once a week. Um, and so they've, you know, they've been doing that uh, mm. for a while. So as a Food Corps member, I kind of am just connecting what they're doing and trying to, to spread it out to the different schools so they can adopt it in yeah. you know, their own ways. So. How did you happen to move to Calaveras County from, from back in Asheville and Spartanburg in that area? Well, I um, applied to Food Corps, and then I, I was interested in living in California mm -hmm. um, and getting familiar with ag agriculture there. And uh, <clears throat> I looked at the different sites, and, you know, there's um, Oakland and San Diego and uh, Ukiah, and a lot of them are mostly city-oriented. And Calaveras County is sort of similar to where I grew up, sort of a rural, sure, yes, rural, yeah. rural kind of ranching, farming area. Yeah. And I thought it would be um, it would be cool to get involved in a community that's sort of similar to my, the one that I grew up in. Yeah. Your um, family's still back there, though. Yeah, they're still back there. Have they been out to visit you? My brother came out to visit. Yeah. yeah. But my what folks are pretty busy. Oh. So. Well, that's, well, you're how old are you now? Twenty-five. Oh, you're getting elderly. <laughs> what do you plan to do in the future? You know, uh, stay with Food Corps and move up in its ranks, or uh, stay in the agriculture, or move to a different type job? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, my kind of dream job would be to have a uh, to have a farm that has an educational program. Oh, and you can bring and the, the kids yeah, can, come can come and out. come on field trips, and then come and do and stay for a number of weeks and learn the basics of agriculture and gardening and animal science. And so I'd really like to be doing more farming and gardening. Uh -huh. And um, so maybe like 60% farming, gardening, 40% teaching. Okay. Um, you enjoy the teaching part. I do enjoy the teaching part, but kids are draining, um, <laughs> <laughs> which I've learned very fast. So you yeah. got to how to moderate your energy. But it really is, um, I really enjoy it. And it's, it's just, uh, the work that I do is easy because it's very hands-on. Yeah. The kids get to do stuff. They get to taste stuff. Um, and so they're always excited to, and attentive um, yeah. when they're doing a lesson or they're, and they're having the fun. So. And they're having fun. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. You know? That's when you, you, when you have an emotion or you enjoy something, you have a co cognition and you remember it, you know? yeah. which is the whole kind of shift in the education towards project-based Learning, where, where yeah. they're actually doing stuff and Rather using their senses. Rather than just memorizing Rather something. Rather than mem memorizing names and yeah. dates. Now, how many kids would you have with you at a typical uh, out by a garden? You know? So at Valley Springs, we have the whole class come out. But uh, I have the teacher there. That so that's 25 to 30 students. Oh, wow. um, and then at some of the other schools where um, I'll have a pull-out group, so I'll have six students come okay. out. And we'll do a lesson. Um, it's a little more manageable. It's a little more manageable, and you can, you know, give them the give them a little bit more personal attention. Yeah. Um, so. Boy, what uh, with the kids? What do they most like to grow? I mean, do they do they think fruit or vegetables or what? What do they say? Well, I'd like to grow this or grow that. Yeah, I think the the fruits are an easy sell, and I think the strawberries. Oh yeah, are the most popular, and we—they're just coming into season, and they get picked clean every time we go out in the garden. <laughs> um, so in the winter, it's a little harder because you have a lot of leafy stuff, you know. Yeah. And um, we, you know, we've made uh, spinach and kale smoothies, you <laughs> oh, know, gee. using uh, bananas and berries, and then you just chock it full of spinach, and it turns it green. Sure. And you can't really taste the spinach, but it—it uh, oh. it looks green, and it has all the like. Uh, nutrient content, and vitamin C, sure, that the all the chlorophyll, has. all the good things. Yeah. Um, so you have the facilities there, like a blender, and I mean anything you need to do things like that at the schools. Yeah. So the at Valley Springs, they have a really supportive administration. The, their principal Dan Clement um, has been very supportive, and then with the Gardens to Grow in nonprofit, they've been able to um, get grants and stuff for blenders and cookware, and we just put an outdoor kitchen mm -hmm. out in the garden. Um, so yeah, the, the 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 resources are there, and the thing that is, um, this is the, the getting the community the cu community involvement and letting yeah. the letting the teachers and the kids know, and you know the parents know that this the garden is kind of a place for them. Yeah. And as we move forward with Food Corps, one of the big goals is to work with teachers to develop 
lessons that use the garden as kind of like a laboratory. Yeah. Um, so they can teach their math lesson or their science lesson and have like a hands-on demonstration or whether it's growth rate or whether it's, you know, putting a celery stalk in uh, food coloring like we were doing today and seeing the food coloring go up the veins of the celery stalk. Oh, you can see that right away? Yeah, yeah. You have to get a pretty I white better, piece. I better of come to your class. Uh, <laughs> so you, you actually, what are you, food coloring? Yeah. And it will go up fairly r rapidly? Yeah, so you have to get all like a white piece of celery because we tried it with our celery from the garden, but it was too green and hardy. And you put it in some concentrated food coloring and it travels up uh, the, the stem. And that's kind of was our lesson today, actually, was stems yeah. and leaves and, you know, what function they serve and learning about photosynthesis. Where do you learn these things yourself? I mean, did you learn it back in the farm back east? I or? learn it usually the night before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I've been, lear I've been learning and it's kind of, a, you know, there's a lot of curriculums out there, but there's not like a necessarily garden uh, garden teacher certification. Sure. So um, I've basically kind of been learning. I've, I've had some experience before, but it's basically kind of... Do they actually uh, give you a curriculum to follow? Yeah, so there's part? a number of curriculums that, I've, that, that are available. There's ag in the classroom. Um, there's a, a life lab has a, a gardening curriculum. Um, there's a gardening curriculum through the Cooperative Extension. And I kind of pull, I'll pull lessons from each one because I think the most unique thing is having a garden to use. And so we'll kind of orient the lesson on what's happening in the garden yeah. and, then, and then teach that whatever nutrition concept is That's applicable for that. Good. Now, are the, are the kids in any way from an academic standpoint, are they tested on anything later? I mean, do the teachers do anything to what did you learn there or... Or is they just learn what they from you what they do in the class outdoors? Yeah. So right now there's no there's no testing, and sometimes mm -hmm. I've been able to supplement a lesson that the student that the teachers are doing mm -hmm. with something that I, whether whether it's um, on geology or, or decomposition. Mm -hmm. um, but right now there's no testing. It's basically the the project is to you know combat um, you know malnutrition and obesity. You know um, I think one in one in four young Americans is too overweight Ooh. to join the army. Um, oh wow! So um, right now, you know, the main push is from like a, an obesity and health-related um, platform to, you know, get the kids eating healthy. Because really, there's no not much nutrition education yeah. in schools. I think most oh very little less yeah. than three hours like a year that the students yeah. receive. So it's and almost, the cooperative extension it's does almost a lot as of little that. as doctors get in medical school. <laughs> Uh, do, you, do you talk to the kids about things like obesity and, uh, I mean, of course you might have a chubby kid or something, you have to be tactful, yeah. but do you tell them how, how what they eat relates to how healthy they are? Yeah, so we, you know, so we, I kind of have a, there's a saying that I adopted from somewhere, I think a curriculum, is that there's no uh, bad foods, just bad diets. So oh, kind okay. of focusing on what you can do instead of what you shouldn't, what you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll um, you know, when we're teaching about uh, fruits and vegetables, some of the, some of the uh, lessons are, you know, to pr disease prevention. Mm -hmm. that you can, um, you know, studies have linked that the more fruits and vegetables you eat, the less likely you, ever, you are to develop um, uh, obesity-related diseases as well as um, cancer and mm -hmm. some other sicknesses. Mm -hmm. So letting them know that, the, that these are positive things that you can do rather than if you drink soda and eat chips, you know, you're going to yeah. be obese and kind of steering, steering folks, steering the kids towards active things they can do. Because I think there's something when you, when you tell a kid especially that not to do something, he something was. in their brain kind of turns <laughs> off, you know. Says, I'm going to do this. So, you know, yeah. when the students come into class, I used to be like, don't talk, you know, don't sit. Like, uh, and I say, I say, thank you, this table is sitting really nice. You know, and, they, and they kind of pay attention. You know? So that's the sort of philosophy that, that we've adopted for the nutrition because pe yeah. people really don't want to be told what they're doing wrong. Yeah. You know, but you do what, try to steer them away from processed foods if you can, huh? Yeah. Or being tactful. I mean, you know, like Twinkies or Ding Dongs or something. Yeah. Yeah, so today we were eating our celery and we ate the celery and those little hairs when you eat the celery and that's the fiber. Sure. And so... Part of the lesson was on fiber and what is fiber and how you get it from eating fruits and vegetables. And if you eat 
processed food, which is chopped up and glued back together, you don't get that fiber. So then you have, can have poor intestinal health, you know. Yeah. So well, that was one of the lessons that okay. we did. Well, in the remaining time we have, is there anything we haven't covered about what you do or about the food core in general um, that comes to your mind? It's, well, it's, just, it's kind of a, you know, it's uh, an organization, a new organization that's doing very old things, you know. We've had the, the Victory Gardens have been around sure. since, you know, the 1940s. Since my days. Since your days, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's not a new idea. It's just, um, I think it's just, you know, connecting people and, you know, everyone across the board can, you know, you know pretty much agree that, that um, being able to garden and produce food and eat healthy and live healthy is something everyone wants to be able sure. to do. And yeah. especially our kids and students should have that, yeah. that, that value. Well, especially with growing up like you did, uh, and imagine here in Calaveras County, the, the kids probably glom onto that a little quicker than some city kids might. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I definitely have it easy. Yeah. You know, they, and the, the joke in the city is that it's not a joke because they actually do you know that chocolate milk comes from uh, brown cows <laughs> and that the eggs come from a store, you know. So yeah. out in Calaveras <laughs> County, they they're, they're definitely are more connected to yeah you know, farming and ranching and where their food yeah, comes from. That's good. Well, you sound like you're kind of like a born teacher, but, you know, your goal of having like a farm, you know, and talk about uh, what you, you know, bring students out or young people or teach about ranching too in addition to that. Yeah. You're really cut out for that. Well, I, I hope so. That's the goal but, one day. I got to make a little money first to get my <laughs> farm going. That's the thing with farming. Uh, it's not the most yeah. lucrative. Property uh, is a little expensive. <laughs> yeah, and I think that another funny thing is, is that a hundred years ago in Calaveras, California, in this region, seventy-five percent of uh, the residents farmed or gardened. Yeah. And today, less than in in the U.S., less than one percent are farmers. Yeah. And the average age is fifty-six of a farmer oh, in America. Wow. Those are interesting. So statistics. I'm trying to pull that statistic down. That's good. That's well, you're, my goal. you're doing your part. But it's good to see you, Noah. Yeah, you as well. And I wish you well in your work. Thank and, you. And getting that, your eventual goal. Thank you. But, uh, and also, is, is Food Court, is it in the phone book? It's not in the phone book, but I think that my email address okay. pops up. And uh, you can Google it at, food, or it's online at Food Core, F-O-O-D-C-O-R-P-S dot org. Okay, and they have more information. And there's, there's a number and there's your... Uh, your uh, website. Yeah. Hey, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Oh, my pleasure. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is great information today, and it really helps the kids and helps our, the country's future, too. So we'll see you next time on Calaveras Living.